you're not closing deals, you're not making money. True. I don't care if you spend a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand uh, in marketing. If that's not translating into sales and, and deals, then you're going to go to out of business pretty fast. You're listening to the Azria Show. If you're looking for quality real estate investing information that you can trust, you've found it. Stay tuned and join the tens of thousands of members that have already benefited from Azria, your home for education, market information, support, and networking opportunities that will advance your real estate investing career. Hello, 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 great state of Arizona and our Azria family. Guys, today we have a very special guest. But like always, before we get there, I want to introduce or reintroduce my co-host, Mike Delpreet. How are you doing today, Mike? Thank you for Ryan for being here as well as Max. I know you guys could be anywhere in the world today, locking up contracts with homeowners, but you chose to be here. Yeah, of course, man. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having us. All yeah. right. So that segue us into Jimenez and Ryan Overcash. Ryan Overcash. And today we're going to be talking about sales, we got dispo, everything like that with wholesaling. So guys, strap on your seatbelts. If you're in an airplane, make sure you put your podcast AirPods ready. So we're going to dig right in. So Max, yeah. Ryan, guys, tell me, how did you guys get started in real estate? So we'll start with you, Max, and then we'll jump yeah, into Yeah, it's been a crazy journey. I first found out about wholesaling, which is a niche in real estate, right? It's, it's, it's one single niche that you can do back in 2015. I had a friend of mine who did fix and flips and stuff. And, uh, I didn't really want to, I didn't really know how to go about that. Cause usually what people think is that you need money, right? You yep. need money, you need capital and, and, and resources. Right. And so I wasn't there and I'm like, I don't have that. And so my relentless pursuit of changing, wanting to change my life. Basically, when I, when I saw what, what, what it was doing for him as far as real estate, I just kept digging and kept digging. There's got to be something there. And my mother-in-law, which is, this is crazy, right? and I always think it's purpose. And it, it's, she's like, why don't you call my, the realtor that helped me buy my house? She worked with a lot of investors. And I said, mm -hmm. cool, let me call her. And so I called her up. She was in Florida. She was no longer in Arizona. And she's like, I don't do that. I don't do any of that no more. I'm like, okay, wow. great. So it was like kind of dead end, right? You run into the yep. dead ends, but there are obstacles, right? See if you can, are you going to overcome them? Or are you going to, you know, start Very there? True. And so what's crazy is at the end of the call, like we were ready to hang up. I said, that's all good. I said, hey, you know, I'll just call and find out if you know anyone I can. She's like, wait a minute. She goes, why don't you look up a guy named Sean Terry? He's there in your market. Mm -hmm. He's an investor. He knows a lot of people. And I said, ah, oh, great. And here's my attitude. I was like, oh, great. Now I got to go look at somebody yeah, else. Somebody else. <laughs> right. <laughs> I gotta go look up somewhere like it's hard work, right? Like, yep. as, and so, yeah, so long story short, I looked him up and I went on his website and he had a, how you can download eBooks on the website and stuff. So I downloaded his eBook and I kid you not, I read that thing four times that night just to make okay. sure that what I was reading was accurate. Right. I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Really yeah, 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 right. right. You know what I'm saying, right? And so. So I read it like four times and as a matter of fact, I woke up the next day. I was still so excited with the reading. I called my friend up and I usually don't call him that early. He's like, what's up, man? Everything all right? Right, right. I found this guy, his name's Sean Terry. He says you can do blah, 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 blah. You can do this by get it under contract, assign your rights to the contract, and then you can be in the middle. And he's like, is he legit? Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> so long story short, that's kept, that was my journey. That was, that's how I started, that's how I found out about wholesaling. And I think the biggest thing is that when you become, when you, if your desire to be an entrepreneur, the biggest challenge is that vehicle, right? What is that vehicle? For me, it was real estate, but the mindset, the limited mindset in regards, like I didn't have the capital, I didn't have the resources and things like that, mm -hmm. but it just, the pursuit, man, I found a way to get in, into real estate, which was through wholesaling. Answer this question for me. And I know sure. it might be an in-depth question, but yeah. for somebody starting out, and everybody say mindset, mindset, you gotta have the right mindset, you gotta have the right perspective. Why is that so important getting started? Man, the big thing is that you're going to run into obstacles. Failure is part of the process, yep. right? And the, the biggest challenge is that you're not mentally preparing yourself. You're not mentally, you're, you're not preparing your mindset to overcome those challenges and, and knowing that, Hey, I'm going to run into this obstacle. Let me mentally prepare for this. Yep. That's why it's important because at the end of the day, if, if the, the thing is that whatever you tie yourself at between the ears, right? The, the six inches, eight inches, if you have a bigger head, mm -hmm. right? Yep. <laughs> it's what's going to translate, right? It's what's going to, it's, it's what's going to actually fulfill in the, in the, in the physical, right? Yep. 
And so you need, that's, that, I always tell everybody in our business, we work just as hard, if not more on ourselves mentally, because it's a grind, man. And you got to mentally prepare for it. It stamina. is. It is. Stamina. Yeah. That mental stamina for sure. I always tell people the most important real estate is right here, exactly. right in between your yeah, two years. Right you know, years. You, you, you will never buy a piece of property. If you don't make sure you control the real estate that's in your Yeah, I always tell everybody sells too. I'm just, I don't want to go too far in there, but just yeah. I always tell everybody 80 percent, 80 percent of, of, of sales is mental, right? And 20 percent is tactics. Yep. That's why you see a lot of like car sales. You see a lot of the revolving door, right? Mm -hmm. Any sales business, that's why you have that high turnover because it's that that we, I, we call it a, a what is head trash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I won't back to you yep. that. Yep. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so Ryan, man, tell us how you got started, man. Oh, yeah, not as quite an elegant story as, as Mr. Matt. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stop it. Love that story. Originally, my grandfather was in uh, real estate back in the day, so it was just kind of in my head, but I never really took it serious. Uh, an opportunity came up around 2009-10 when that crash was going mm -hmm. on. I wasn't, as Max was talking, I wasn't mentally ready for it, but I jumped in just trying to ride that wave. Like, oh, real estate, you can make money. Yeah. Didn't get too far with it because, again, I didn't take it serious. It was a part-time thing. Fast forward to 2019, right before the, the pandemic, so to speak. I told myself I wouldn't miss the next time when that happened in 2008, 9, 10. And I mm -hmm. just kind of thought, hey, this is another opportunity. So I jumped into to education. I purchased education, mm -hmm. yeah, um, okay. but nothing else with it, just education. Mm -hmm. And um, got stuck. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I found uh, Steve and Max, actually, uh, on, uh, I think, Wholesale Hotline. Okay. I All saw right. them, and I related to them right off the bat. I was like, oh, wow. You know, nice. I think I can... I could do this again, so I reached back out to them and I joined their uh, mentorship and their training. Got and it. I really started picking up and understanding a lot more. And then one of their trainings, they were mentioning how a lot of people locally here who were doing well, I shouldn't say a lot, well, enough, you know, and uh -huh. too much, um, started with them as well. So they helped them get a the start. And I was like, oh, wow, why don't I do the same thing? So uh, instead of competing with them, I wanted to, uh, to join mm -hmm. up with them, team up, and you know, learn as much as I possibly can. And uh, I didn't know what that meant. I went in to meet Max, and uh, right off the bat, uh, I think we had a connection. I wanted to, to join the team, learn more. And okay. I've been yeah. with them ever since. Yeah, I want to add something there real quick because uh, I think he missed on that one. He sent a message, a DM, mm -hmm. DM me, mm -hmm. but it's a, you know, slid but, right and in it there. Slid huh? right in there. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it took a while for me to get back to him. But I responded. I'm pretty good about responding to my DMs, but he took action on that. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I had to chase him and Steve. <laughs> yeah. And what? And what? Some people exactly, Mike, with the persistence. Some people, especially guys. And I'm going to speak from a male perspective mm -hmm. because that's what I am. Yeah, yeah, from a male yeah. perspective, you don't want to seem like, oh, man, I'm trying to hunt this guy down. I'm just chasing this guy down like I'm a groupie or something like that. But you, that's one of those self-limiting beliefs. Yeah. You say, hey, but there's something out there that I want. I need to go out there and get it no matter what it looks like. You know, and a lot of times that's a good point, Marcus. A lot of times, though, it's ego. Right? Yeah, yep. and, and what happens is that we don't the thing is that majority of people or general population or you want to say they look at ego as prideful yeah but in a way of hey look at me i'm a big shot but what they don't look at ego is is, is ego and pride is also that mm -hmm. is am i am i gonna let go of my ego and my pride and hurt my own feelings of reaching out and going after what i want right true, true. regardless if i feel embarrassed about it <laughs> and, and, so, and on the other end on our position we respect that oh yeah we respect mm -hmm. the hustle right yeah. that, that persistence that's we that's true because i mean we all of us we have people that come to us all all time you mm -hmm. know during the day slide into our dms everything like this how can i do what you do how can i do what you what you do and you give them some simple instructions you never hear back from them yep and so you guys that's out there listening if you really want to take real estate seriously you have to get out there and you have to do what people tell you to do yeah. and you have to be persistent at it no, 100%. I agree. I agree, man. Yeah, what's next? What so, so let's kind of dig into, we know we're in a competitive market, or I would just say more so a hot market. Mm -hmm. How do you distinguish yourself from other people when it comes to sales, Max, when you're trying to trying to lock up that contract, trying to get that deal? Without going yeah. too deep, what do, what do you guys do that distinguish yourself? So I think first and foremost, you need to figure out what your competitive advantage is, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, what happens is they, again, and this is stuff you learn, right? As you, as you grow, as you, you work on yourself, you develop your skills, stuff you, you find out by networking with AZ RIA, you, you join other masterminds, like that helps, helps you to think. But 
I, I think even for someone that's just starting out, is figure out what is that. It might not be right now for someone that's starting now. That competitive advantage be like. I can find you more houses than anyone can and I'll bring them to you, mm -hmm. right? So we have to look deep and, and figure out what is my competitive advantage over what's happening in the market, right? And so that's the first thing that we do is we look at ourselves, what is our competitive advantage compared to other to other people that are wholesaling, investing, flipping? And so we we write that out. So when our sales guys are talk, or when our sales guys are out there trying to close deals, Ryan's out there trying to JV deals, like. Hey, this is what separates us from a competition, right? And and so we write those th three things out. The first one could be like they're really simple. You don't have to get really philo philosophical with it, right? First thing is we do what we say, right? We, we're committed to the seller. Number one, mm -hmm. we can buy the properties, right? That's when you're when you're starting out. Obviously, that might be a difficult one for you. That's where we're at right now. We can release funds, right? Like if somebody's in a situation where maybe they need funds, maybe they need they need something to, like we had a lady we helped out need her to buy a car for her daughter. We release funds and help her buy the car, right? Um, other mm -hmm. competitive advantage is that we, we, we give a non-refundable earnest money. So really simple things, right? Yeah. What, are the, what is that competitive advantage that we use so we can stand out? Uh, and that's on the wholesale and the buying side. Obviously, on the sell side, it's a whole different story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, Ryan, on the sales side, man, you're JVing and locking up deals all across the country. I mean, sure. kind of share with us your insights on that how are you how are you putting the pieces together let's just say in detroit like we was talking about earlier before we got on the show yeah so basically steve and max got a pretty big following with the disruptors and the training and mm -hmm. you know um, all the hard work they've done so really it's leveraging um, all the followers we have with uh, disruptors we have a lot of videos going out messages you know explaining what the jv program is about how we could help what our competitive advantage is, as Max said mm -hmm. earlier, which on my side more, a little bit different, but on my side is more being genuine. And like Max said, doing what we say we're going to do, really opening up and, and helping them. Okay. Um, and just again, showing them how genuine we are with, uh, with our office. Really quick, the, can you talk about like the feedback that we got and how transparent we are with our business? Right? Yeah, exactly. Max has said, said wow. Uh, so yeah, so uh, competitive advantage basically just being transparent. Mm -hmm. A lot of the feedback that we're we're getting from you know the people we're helping, and it's always like after the excuse me, <laughs> after the deal's done or as we get to the end, they're just like, wow, you guys really say and do what you guys you know are saying and doing in mm -hmm. the clips. You guys really do open up your office, which we do full access. They're basically an extension of our office wherever they may be at. As yeah. you mentioned, Detroit, Alabama. Uh, Georgia, Washington, those are just some of the states that we're actively working right now. So, so yeah, one the, part of the reason you guys are on here are on the show today is we're having a non-state investing panel on yep. what, come up May 9th, right? So, so that's why we're kind of going into those questions. So, Max, you guys have so tell us how you guys went from local to national. And yeah. Then we'll talk about a little bit of the sales in it and then the dispo. Sure. Along those lines. Well, so before we open up the the nationwide JV program, we were already uh, last year. I want to say the year before we we first went out to New Mexico. That was like our first virtual market, okay. right? And so we were there for about I would say nine months uh, selling or buying houses there virtually. We did okay. And the challenge with New Mexico is uh, don't get offense for those of you from New Mexico. <laughs> they're on island time, so yeah. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that expression, mm -hmm. right? And acquiring the deals wasn't a problem. It was the disposition of the deals. So the buyers moving at their own pace and not pulling the trigger. So I always made the joke is that the difference between there and here in Phoenix is that I can call a buyer at midnight and they're showing up at one o'clock to look at the deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there's markets like that. So that kind of put a damper on that. We pulled out of that and then what did you go to the next? Yeah, good question. Yeah. So we went with, we went with TV. So okay. that was our, our marketing channel, right? Like we went head first. <laughs> no, I mean, but. But why New Mexico versus Utah? Yeah, yeah, that's, what, that's okay. what I'm explaining. Yeah, so so we wanted to use, we wanted to jump into television as marketing channel. So New Mexico was available for okay, us gotcha. with, with the people that we connected with. Okay. And it was, and, and not only that, it was on the lower end spectrum of the cost. Okay. It cost us a lot less than say like a, a Tucson market mm -hmm. or Phoenix and things like that. But I mean, the, 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 and then not only that, but the average per average uh, price per square foot on the properties where you were still, they were half yeah. price than, than here in, in, in Phoenix. Yeah. And, but no, you know, like I said, uh, you know, the challenge was not acquiring the deals, the challenge was just positioning the deals. And so we were like, and, and our team was, you know, seeing that the deals weren't moving fast enough and it creates that, that breaks that yeah. morale. So we got out of there and then we we're like, what do we do now? So then an opportunity opened up in Oklahoma. That market was really well, that market was really good for us. We still have some direct mail that's going out, I think, 
in Oklahoma. Okay. And then that we did that like, towards the middle of last year to, up to now. And then this year, we just decided to open it up completely, nice. like nationwide, with our j joint venture program that uh, Ryan is running right now. Yeah. Okay. Very, very important. People will have to understand that not every market is the same. Yeah. I know we say that as a broad spectrum, but like you said, Island time, just the whole disfall. Yeah. You can lock the deals up, but then the buyers say, well, what I'm thinking about it. You'll send out an email. They'll respond three weeks later. Hey, you still got that deal. I may be interested. <laughs> I just forgot about it. No, I'll give you an example. We had one, I remember this because uh, it makes me laugh, like banker hours, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, so we, we set up the, a walkthrough on a Saturday with the seller, right? Cause mind you, like we work for the seller always 100%. Yeah. Our priority is the seller. So we set it up. Sellers like, you guys are good. Come Saturday. Called our buyer, it was Thursday or Wednesday, so enough time. He's like, well, can they do it Friday before five? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, or maybe morning at 10, we're like, no. Right. <laughs> well, that's something, you know, if you're here in Arizona and you're interested in trying to get better returns or yeah. looking for something outside of here, that's just part of, it just is what it is. Like yeah. when I entered Cleveland, I'm talking to homeowners, it felt like I was talking to homeowners back in 2010, right? <laughs> like it's just a different, it's just a different vibe and the feeling you got to, just like everything else yeah. in business, you have to adjust and adapt. So, so when you get this deal, right, you have the deal under contract, Max, you did your job, the team did your job, Ryan, now you're in this new city, random lead, random city, right? Because this is how they're coming in. You're, you're not just focused right. on one. So I'm gonna say, I think you guys mentioned Detroit, right? So yeah. what do you do now? Yeah, actually, uh, it's kind of funny. Kind of go back to the basics, you know, mm -hmm. of, of what you would do in your very first starting, the way I kind of look at it. So we start looking at the solds, right? Where, yeah. where are the solds? Yeah. Look at the buyers, mm -hmm. uh, the LLCs, mm -hmm. um, start skip tracing the LLCs and making calls. Where do you get your, just so people listen and where you get your solds at? So I go to Zillow is one of them okay. uh, for, so, for the out of state. Um, it's free, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we do have a couple uh, paid ones we use, uh, still use PropStream, that's great. And then our number one is InvestorLift. I don't know if uh, you guys have mm -hmm. InvestorLift, yeah. but that's a pretty good program. A lot of vetted buyers, over 2.5. So that really helped uh, catapult us into the JV uh, program as well, just because we knew the resources and the tools we had yeah. to, to really leverage. So, so you pull the list, you whatever from these programs, you skip trace them, pick up the phone, just got a deal. Yeah, I started doing that first, uh, but what we fit, uh, figured out, which is a little bit more time efficient, time effective, is text blasting. So we pull the list, mm. text blast, okay. or you can have if you have. Through resourceful, we have a VA call, all of them. Yeah. And then the idea is to have myself and my partner Bino on the phone talking to interested uh, buyers. And what do you guys think about what I thought was fun going uh, out to the Midwest was even going to the right title companies? Have you guys had any weird experiences? I was going to bring that up. Okay. Okay. So well, well, you know, that is that is oh. No, he does. <laughs> no, he no, that's not, nothing, nothing crazy. That's just been that was one of the biggest challenges yeah. as well is finding a title company that's. Uh, on the up and up, and they understand mm -hmm. the language, the lingo. Mm -hmm. That was one thing about New Mexico, I remember, they didn't use the word assignment. They had no idea what assignment was. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it was a referral. That, that's, that's really what the biggest yeah. difference. Even in OKC as well, the title companies, they don't move like they do out oh, here. Oh, yeah. 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 OKC, okay, you think you're going to close and they're like, hey, by the way, we need an abstract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and like a what? No, <laughs> so an abstract, you know, just for the people listening, is where they got to go back now and make sure that the lot you're buying is the, it's the actual size, size yeah. everything. Yeah, that it matches. Because back then it was like, yeah, we'll sell, I'll sell you this lot, Mike, right around where that where the river starts. That's where it ends for your line. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I mean, that's something that uh, investors got to look at. Yeah. A title company or what Marcus? What you deal with is he has to close with attorney. Yeah, that's yeah. another issue. Yeah. And Mark, you will tell us some stories there, man. You have you have horrible stories. I mean, we have where you have the deal locked up with the uh, seller. You oh, and the yeah. seller, mm -hmm. mutual terms, everything squared away, ready to go. Yeah. And then the attorney jumps in and says, "Hey, you know what? I may be able to get you more." Oh. So man. so it's not yeah. you just dealing with buyers is trying to go around you, but the attorney will do that also. There's no conflict of interest with that? <sighs> you know what, man, it's, <laughs> yes it is, <laughs> yes it is. And then even like in some contracts, they say where you have a seven day attorney review period. Yeah. So we put in our contracts, you know, no attorney review period, yes. everything like that. But we still lost deals because yeah. attorneys backdoor and say, nope, we're gonna make it hell. So you can't close this transaction. 
get out of your inspection period and then they just go and find another buyer. Yeah, and I think with that too, like every state, like you're saying, has like I've heard New York is really notorious. Yep. You gotta go through all that red tape. We just closed what in Georgia, the, the deal with the attorney's office? Uh, was Georgia. Alabama. Oh Alabama, Alabama. sorry, yeah. yeah. Alabama, we closed the deal there through an attorney. That was pretty smooth actually. The mm -hmm. buyer was was a little hard to work with, but we got it done. But there's some attorneys, uh some stories are like where you're the seller has their own attorney and then you have you know your are yeah, attorney yeah. and there's conflict there so you just got to do your research i mean i think ryan said it really well earlier is i always tell people like virtual wholesaling or wholesaling nationwide is not glamorous it's is it rewarding yeah because you have a, a wider or a a more wider opportunity net, yeah. yeah wider net but with the wider net comes more problems right wider you, problems yeah wider yeah. problems exactly <laughs> and i always tell people man it, it, it's like if you have a wholesale deal in your market do it there first so you can experience, get yeah. the experience, and then maybe go to another market because you think about it, like you got to duplicate what you're doing here somewhere where you're not even there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I get deals sent from other cities, mainly Cleveland, mm -hmm. where like someone's just getting started. Just like Phoenix. Yeah. Things change from block to block. Oh, yeah. Right. right. Whether, it, whether it, you know, the kind of neighborhood it is, yeah. and people are over, overpaying on these properties. So Both sellers overpay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, yeah, you get it. So yeah, so but that's what I guess that also gives me an opportunity to especially if someone's newer, I get to maybe link up on that deal, yeah. educate them about the market. But uh, yeah, that's kind of well, that's our approach. Like I, I told Ryan when we first started the the the, the JV Nationwide program, I said, hey, because he was like, man, these guys don't know. I said, hey, let's back up a little, let's have a talk. It, we have to educate these people. We yeah, have yeah. to show them the right way. And then once the light bulb goes off, guess what? They're going to come back to you, right? And we've experienced mm -hmm. that now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, so we say all that because Max is going to be on our panel next week, yeah. Monday, May 9th. We have uh, Congressman Greg Stanton coming in to talk a little bit to our members, as well as we're going to have Marcus Maloney talking about uh, fixing and flipping in Chicago, Max Wholesale Nationwide, Greg mm -hmm. Slaughter, 300 rental properties in Indiana, and then uh, Big Ron National uh, Tenant Screening Company. So. Definitely be there and learn from yep. the experts about how to make that move out of state. So, yep. Yep. so let's take a brief break, hear a word from our sponsors, and when we come back, we'll dig in more with Max and Ryan. This episode of the Azria Show is brought to you by Azria Business Associate, Zona Law Group. Zona Law Group handles numerous real estate matters with a focus on landlord tenant law in Arizona. For more information, visit their site at zona.law. All right, guys, we're back with Max Jimenez and Ryan Overcash. And before we went to break, we were talking, we we're introducing sales. So why did you guys dig so heavy and so deep into sales versus some other area yeah, yeah, as wholesalers? One thing that there was a book I read a while back and love it or hate them. I mean, I'm not a big fan, but Grant Cardone wrote a book called mm -hmm. Sell or Be Sold. Mm -hmm. it, it's a red book for those of you guys that are watching. I recommend that you get that book. And in that book, he basically said that Everything in life is, is has whether it's it's directly indirectly has something to do with sales, right? True. Whether us as parents trying to sell our kids to better the education or do the things that we're doing, whether a boyfriend or a girl, whether the boyfriend's trying to sell the girlfriend and marry him, so mm -hmm. so on and so on and so on, right? And so I've always been man, I've been involved in sales some way, some sort for a long time, and I think I always get into this debate like, what's more important, marketing? Or sales, sales, right? Mm. And so you have you have people on one side saying marketing is more important because they bring in the le leads. I'm on this side. I don't care. You can bring in a thousand leads if you didn't close. If you don't close yeah. one lead, you're not getting a deal. That's true. You get a thousand leads. Let me get a hundred leads. I said, let's work. Mm. And so I think sales happens to be the most important. What is it called? Uh, aspect of a business, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're not closing deals, you're not making money. True. I don't care if you spend a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand uh, in marketing. If that's not translating into sales and, and deals, then you're going to go to add a business pretty fast. It's kind of like chicken or the egg. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. My mentor told me yeah, traffic times conversion equals that. Simple as that. Yeah, exactly. You know, so um, gotta convert. Yeah, gotta yeah, convert. Gotta convert. Gotta convert. Yeah, and so obviously we we did a, like like I mentioned earlier, we work a lot on ourselves at the office. We're always doing something to how do we get better? What program are we going into now? And in 2018, we got introduced to, to a program called Sandler Training and a Sandler Training System. 
And so the gentleman that we got introduced to, his name was Brad, and we went out there, he's in Scottsdale. And so, yeah, we, we start, Steve started going first, my business partner, Steve, and uh, he was telling me about it. And I was like, man, that sounds really good. He would record him while he was in the, uh, yep. in the hood. Two would, for one. Yeah, two for one. <laughs> so, so he sent me the recordings after he was done. I'm like, and I would listen to him like, wait a minute, this, this is different. Like, mm -hmm. I've never heard this type of sales before. Like, what mm -hmm. the hell? And so, and, and long story short, we ended up uh, joining the, the, the sales training. And not only did we join, but we also became life members. Like, cause okay. you have, a, I think they went away with the life membership, but uh, we ended up sales training. So since 2018, we decided to invest right in mm -hmm. ourselves, because again, one of the biggest things that I think a lot of people don't understand, yes, it's hard when you're, when you're starting out. But as you start to level up, Marcus, it gets even harder. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, Mario Brothers, right? You, the first, the first level, you're just learning how yep. to jump, hit the <laughs> You go to left. There's a steel door. How do right, you get to that right. steel how door? Do right. Do this? Who has that key for that steel door? Right. I got to go find Michael yep. Dupree. Yep. <laughs> Michael Dupree has the key. See, <laughs> and that way you guys connect it. Yeah. So, and and and, and it, it's and it takes an investment in yourself. I think for those of you guys that are listening, it's important. You know, AC Ria provides a lot of, I mean, products and a lot of, uh, what is it called, uh, training as well. So we decided to invest in ourselves. Obviously, we were, we were in that place now that we can do that. And man, we ran with it. Now, I will say this is that they laid the foundation and they laid the structure for their, their training, their sales training, very high level. We tailored it around real estate. And how do we do that? We went, we would go to class, right, twice a week. Or, mm -hmm. you know, twice a week, every single week I was going to classroom. Mm -hmm. I would go out and I get my face kicked. Like, and I, I would go out to appointments. I was literally in 2019, I was going to either one to three appointments daily. That's how, that's how I was training. I would come back on Fridays and I would talk to my sales trainer. I would say, Hey, here's what happened in the, uh, in the appointment. Here's what I said. And he would call me out. He's like, but you didn't say it like that. Did you? I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. Brad, that's how I said it. He goes, I feel sorry. He goes, for you and the seller. <laughs> 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 went out, you learned something, and yep. you applied the knowledge exactly. immediately. Oh yeah, fast. You know, you, that's the way to really see and really get better. So a lot of people like just to go get the information. They want the information out. Yeah, they don't do it. Yeah, it's it's funny you point that out because a lot of people are like, I'm not, I don't have the experience, and I always tell them like, look, you, I don't care how much knowledge you you get, like you can have a lot of knowledge, mm -hmm. but if you don't go out and use it, you're not going to get the wisdom to, and then the experience comes after yeah. that. Yep. You could be a, you could be a knowledgeable fool. Yeah, those things that you, know, you bump into and those, those appointments, you don't make them look like. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the things that I always tell people is education without application is just information. There you go. There you that's go. all there it is. And, and everybody walks around with information. You got, you got it in your pocket with your iPhone or a Google phone all day. But if you don't yeah. take what you learn and apply it, then it's just useless information. Yep, yep. All right. So yeah. what happened next? You guys... You're training, you're applying, you're critiquing. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 building our script. I'm sitting there in training. I'm building our tech script, our call script. So we definitely, even though we we learned that style of training, at the end of the day, we came up with our with our own way and our own approach that we learn ourselves through experience. And, and again, like I said, our base kick. And so there's a couple other sales trainers that have a similar style, but I would I would challenge that we we we, we actually. Ex took that experience and ran with it and, and actually applied it to what we do and, and tailored it around that. And so, yeah, so then after a while, people were like, Hey, how do I learn that style? How do we mm -hmm. get like that? And so I want to say a, a year and a half later, after us attending, we decided to, you know, give back. We came up with our own workshop, right? Okay. Real quick. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to know first. Sure. So after you're applying this, how did you notice the difference in your business from applying what you learned and critiqued and made your own? How'd that, how'd you guys feel about what happened there? So the biggest thing is that a lot of, so here's the main thing that the biggest problem that I see in our business is people are, when they're talking to sellers, when they're negotiating deals, they go into like this convincing mode. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what happens in convincing mode, is like, I'm talking to Ryan, right? I'm negotiating Ryan and, and I'm trying to solve a problem that I don't know that Ryan has, right? Or he may not even have a problem and I'm applying a solution, but, but what if I can give you this, but what if I can, I'm trying to convince him. Right. So what, what, what that training did for me is that it shifted my mindset from a convincing mode to sifting mode. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to probe, I'm going to ask questions, take away probing questions. What if we do this? What happens next? And now if he's not, if he's not engaging with me, I'm be like, Hey, you're not ready to sell. Let mm -hmm. me move on to a person who mm -hmm. is, let me go to Marcus. 
So that's one of the biggest mm -hmm. things that I learned, right, is, is, is that, is, is moving the mindset from convincing, because man, is really, you're, we're, we're trying to get these properties 40 to 50 to 60 cents on the dollar at the end of the day, you can't convince someone they right. have to have something that you that you have to solve right that's the first thing the second thing is that uh is is learning how to how to solve problems asking questions it's really important uh, Salespeople like to talk more than they like to listen and how do you turn that around is that by asking very important detailed questions right and and, and that's one thing that they they, te they taught us right and then we went out and applied it asking these mm -hmm. questions positioning the questions with tonality make sure that you're not coming out too strong those are the biggest thing, man, is, is, is get to the point where they're clothing themselves at the end of the day. Yeah. They either they're clothing themselves mm -hmm. or they're disqualifying themselves. Right. The two. Yeah. What's a good, uh, I think it was you, a seller remorse. A seller remorse? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, it's, so on the post sale where, because where, there's buyer's remorse, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you buy a nice watch or a laptop, mm -hmm. I'm like, Man, I don't know if I should spend that money. <laughs> I don't care if you've got money. Listen, you buy something, you think about right. it. It doesn't matter. Like, it happens to me all the time. And so sellers go through the same thing, right? So instead of buyer's remorse, we call it seller's remorse. And so what I always tell, what, what we do in our office and what we tell our, our, our students is that, hey, when you get the agreement signed, do not leave the table. Do not run out of there. I know you want to do that. I want to mm -hmm. you want to get out of there, hang up the phone, but stay there and ask them a couple more questions like, hey, Marcus, you know, now that we got this taken care of, obviously we, you signed the agreement. Is this a question? Can I ask you a question? Sure. What does this agreement mean to you? It means that I have pressure relieved off of me. And that's what you want to hear. Yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. you, if he was to say, well, it just means you're buying the house. Then I'm going to say, oh, oh just, I'm confused. Because earlier when you said that this was going to relieve pressure, this was going to be right. able to get you over to your next, because that, that's what it means to me, Marcus. Yep. I want him to feel that emotion again, right? Mm -hmm. And then I go into the next thing, like, hey, Marcus, you know, it doesn't happen all the time. When I talked to my, when I bought Michael's house, Here's what happened with Michael. Michael actually called me and he was saying he was getting a lot of calls. And not only that, actually his sister came and said, why did you sell for that low? Or why did you sell for that price? And obviously me and Michael really hit it off. And basically Michael mm -hmm. said, well, Max, I don't have, I'm not going to do anything already. I'm selling to you. Marcus, if anything that was to happen, if any of that was to happen, what, how would you respond to that? Basically, I'll just let everybody know that they don't understand this, the situation that I'm in. And this was the best offer for me at the Got time. It. I appreciate that. And and that's where I want to walk with you, right? In case someone comes, I want to make sure that you and I are on the same page. Because when I leave here, now I got to get my transaction coordinator involved. I got to use my resources, open up escrow, get the funds in. I just don't want to get that call two days later. We're like, hey, Max, you know what? I, I want to talk about what we did. Gotcha. So that's the, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the important, mm -hmm. man. Important, exactly. Very new. Yeah, that's why I love what you guys do. And that's why I wanted to talk about your guys' training, man, because... It, no one teaches us. I'm sure someone teaches us. You're just starting. You're looking around. Yeah. You're not finding that. Type, type of yeah, I mean, Ryan, go ahead. No, I was going to say uh, what I hear. This is maybe you know, from from outside. As long as I have, I think a lot of people who don't have the sales background that Steve and Max have, right, are, are scared to do that because of how they approach the situation or the sell itself, right? They pressured. They did such mm -hmm. a hard sell. Yeah. They're like, I ain't doing that. From my perspective, that's it. It gave them a reason to back out. Right. And they do it the right way. Yeah. Right. The right approach. That I think even solidify the sale. Yeah. So yeah. that's just my perspective. No, yeah, and I think a lot of people when they're newer, they feel like if they ask those questions, it's gonna ruffle their feathers, mm -hmm. yeah. and the seller's gonna back out, or they're, they're gonna learn something that's gonna kill the deal. But they want because they want to get that check so quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So course. when actually by not asking those questions, you're actually potentially killing the deal. Right. Yeah. No. No. And, and, and I always say like, our system's not a hundred proof. There, I don't think there is any system that if anybody says they're lying, are we gonna lose some deals? Yes. Our, but in the long run, we're going to get more deals yeah. because we're, we're actually, our attrition rate, which is cancellation rate is, it's probably one of the lowest in the business. I mean, we mm -hmm. out of 10 deals that we contract, we're closing on eight, right? Mm -hmm. And the only reason why the other two have canceled is because there's a situation or maybe yeah. we just couldn't find a, it was, maybe it was a little high. We still give an opportunity, mm -hmm. but I mean, our, our cancellation rate is like really super low. And it's important you say that one, that's means you're not leaving sellers hanging, which is great. Yeah. Right? yeah. Two, I don't know all the logistics, but the wholesaling, getting licensing, all yeah. the buzz around that. Some places are saying you might have to be able to show your your track record, yeah. right? So understanding these skills that you guys teach is going to help that track record. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, I mean, you know, when we started the the workshop, like everybody was, man, I don't know. If, sorry, uh, they, first the reaction is like. 
how can you ask the seller that? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I said, but that's what you want to know. You want to ask those hard questions yeah. because you're either going to find out now in this little 10 minute conversation, or you're going to find out an hour later. But I mean, after yeah. you spend that whole hour, or even let's say you get the contract, like Ryan said, yeah. right? Force sign here. Third copy is yours. Right. <laughs> that style. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and what we found out a lot of people, when they come to the workshop and they go back, we get that and get those testimonials. Like, man, this, that really worked yeah. for us. We even have people that sit in the workshop and they're like, and they're thinking of deals that they did in the past before they came. Like, man, and, and the feedback, right. like, if I would have said this, said this, all these deals yeah. that I missed, they're like, uh, man, money. counting that money. Well, at least well, you get the deals. Yeah. yeah the future yeah, right. deals. Exactly. Well, it's, it's really important. What we always tell our people is you want to have that relationship with that seller yeah. to where you're comfortable to ask those tough questions exactly. and you're comfortable to receive that answer yeah. from that seller. That way, when you get down the line, you're not getting to the closing table and they say, well, I got another question about this or yeah. what, what about this? They're open enough to say, hey, you know what, Marcus? I was thinking about this at night. What, what would we do in this situation? And you guys can have that yeah. conversation and make it easy. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's not rocket science, man. It's just asking for permission. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's really all it is. Like if I'm saying now, hey, Marcus, I, I don't know if I can buy this house. I'm super honest. The way I find out if I can buy a property is by asking you a couple questions. Some may be impersonal. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Or even like coaching the, the seller. Like typically when I meet with sellers, they usually have some questions. Have you thought about what you mm -hmm. would ask me? You can even ask that before you go out before. to the appointment. Yeah. Before it. Hey, I'm going to leave you a little bit of homework. Come up with your top three questions. I want to make sure I answer them while I'm there. And if, if I get the house, if I buy the house, it's, it's mm -hmm. all good. If it's not. We shake hands yeah. and we're buddies. That's <laughs> it. And there's, there's an aspect to customer service Yeah, exactly. in there. And that's, that's basically mm -hmm. what it is, is yes, it's sales, but it's that level of customer yeah. service also. Yeah. It's a, I can't remember the word, but a consultative sales, mm -hmm. consultative sales. That's kind of the yeah. approach that we take. Yeah. So what's the name of the program? So it's called the uh, sales disruptors. Okay. Yeah. That's uh so in that umbrella sales disruptors, basically we have we have online training. So if somebody that doesn't want to come to the live mm -hmm. workshops, we have that where they can learn on their own, on their own pace, if they want no pressure, nothing like that. Obviously we, it's not like there's pressure at the live workshops, but, yeah. but there's also the, the live workshops that they can come to. Now, the thing about the live workshops is that it's more interactive. So you can ask questions, your yeah. doubts and all that, and you can attend it live or zoom as well too. Uh -huh. um, so we just opened up that okay. zoom option this year and we have, so we have both options and there's a, there's, there's other stuff that we get and, and when, sorry, when you come to the workshop, you actually, you leave with a big portfolio like this big. So not only do you come and hear us, but you leave with the, with the call scripts, you leave with tech scripts, you leave with a, you know, in house appointment script over the phone appointment script, a cold call script, a business wow. and an, how to analyze your okay. business. So they leave pretty packed. Right? And, and a full day with you and Steve. Okay. Yeah. A full day with Steve and I. Okay. Okay. Wow, man. So, so you guys, how many times a year do you guys do that? So we do the what? so there's two workshops, the one day, which is strictly sales. Okay. That one is every quarter. And then the two day one, we do it twice a year. There's a two, there's a two day workshop where, where we actually do the sales aspect and then, all, and then we break down our business, everything that we do in our business. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So if, if an Esria member is interested, we, you guys gave us a special site. Yeah. So, working on it so for your, for your members, your, your audience that are part of Asria, basically they can go to disruptors.com forward slash Asria. So oh, yeah. disruptors.com forward slash Asria. So that way, you know, they, they can uh, connect with, with us. Sure. That, we always make it uh, a point that Ezra always gets the best deal. <laughs> so <laughs> we make sure you hit that. No, hundred percent. You have to be a member though. Yeah. So yeah, you do have to be a member. There is actually uh, talking about that. You can't just go buy it there. They need a code from us. Got yeah. It. So, mm -hmm. and there'll be customer service. There'll be a service there for those that, that we know are members that might come through you guys, but yeah. Okay. They, they, even though we're announcing it on here, they just can't go on there and get the same. Nope. If you're not a member, you're not going to get the same. Gotcha. <laughs> so guys, remember disruptors.com forward slash Asria, disruptors.com forward slash Asria to get that information. So Max, Ryan, man, you guys did an awesome job today. Sure, we talked about quite a bit today. We love to see you guys around Asria. Yeah, They're yeah. at the monthly meetings. So feel free to come up to them, talk to them. Cool. Max is very personable. Ryan is very personable. We're we're real estate investors, so we love to talk. Yeah, you know, so. <laughs> right. Yeah, we we'll be here all day talking about stuff. But no, I, thank you for inviting us. I I know it's been a while, man. Marcus, you and I spoke. Yeah, and yeah. No, it's uh, good. shout out to Josh. He's out there. He's he's doing a good job, and man, it's you know lining him up. We finally got. 
he's our affiliate manager, but he's doing a really good job. And man, it's it was a long time coming. It's uh, it's good. Yeah. Time is always right, man. Yeah. Plugging the, your 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 two shows. Yeah. yeah. So you free information. Ryan, you want to talk about Club, Club Collab? What are we doing with Club Collab tonight? Oh, Club, Club every Collab. Every Tuesday. Sorry. Every Tuesday, seven p.m. Arizona time. What do you do? Uh, give us a call, guys, or, or connect with us. Uh, we're talking about our collaboration over competition. If you need help in any part of the process, locking up a deal, talking to buyers, working with the title companies, any part of the process, it's a good time to connect with us. A club collab, 7 o'clock Tuesdays. Yep. And then uh, the other the other way you can also connect with us is I do live calls every single Thursday. It's called The Closer. If you go to my YouTube, follow me on Instagram at uh, Real Max Jimenez, Real Max Jimenez. Uh, send me a DM. I'll send you the link, uh, but that happens every single Thursday at 10 a.m. And you can submit your leads actually for me to call. And we're talking to sellers live. How, yeah. how better? How more? Wow. It's huge. Like if, if you're not ready for a training program, you're still feeling all this out. This is free, right? Yeah. So let me tell you something. I'm glad you brought that up because I was at an event and then I had a guy come up to me and he's like, Max, I want to buy your, your training. And I said, I said, cool. Well, tell me a little more. What was your experience? He's like, I haven't done my first year, my first deal yet. And I said, dude, don't buy my training. Exactly. I said, no. do not invest in my training. I said, go to my YouTube channel, watch the watch the live every every Thursday, and, and we're on on Tuesdays. So you're gonna get more out of that because you have invested money, you got time right now. And sure enough, he did that, and he messaged us on a live, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's working on his first deal just on that. Love it. Right. And, and, and so everyone knows, like, we definitely want to start working. We will be working more with the disruptors here at yeah. Ria. And Marcus does the marketing one, uh, excuse me, negotiations one on one class. So we thought that we might start sprinkling your style into the class with us oh, so yeah. the members and everyone can start seeing what you guys are about, all oh, those basics down before yeah. they go higher level. So, okay. Thank you. Well, great. So, a great state of Arizona. And as real, you guys know what to do. You got the information. Let's get out there and let's take action. And we will see you guys on the next show. So, I'm Marcus Maloney, Mike Del Preet. We will see you guys at the next event. Thanks for listening to The Azria Show with your hosts, Marcus Maloney and Mike Delpreet. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you found this information valuable, head over to azria.org and learn more about our community.